4.3 is about starting to model things. I think for some of you, this might actually help your understanding of writing the functions in the first place. If you look to make some connections between what's actually happening and... Uh, can you guys be quiet, please? Um, what's actually happening with something rotating and what the function looks like. You can model anything that is... Uh, anything where you have a situation where something is fluctuating up and down, it's a periodic behavior such as the length of the day throughout the year, how many daylight hours. I guess my axis would have to be down here, but uh, right now we're in the uh, probably this phase of the thing right there, right? In, in December, end of December, we got about eight daylight hours. It's light for eight hours a day. In the summer, it's like it's light for maybe 16 hours of a day. If you went further north, you might uh, you might find that it's more like this. Um, longer and shorter. I don't know if anybody's been quite far north, but they, whoops, that's not a good graph, but it uh, it's light maybe 20 hours of the day if you go up to the Yukon. If you go above the Arctic Circle, you got actually, you know, like 24 hours of daylight in the, in the summer, and then in the winter you get no daylight. But anything that's repetitive because the Earth just keeps going around and that keeps, that cycle keeps repeating, you can model with periodic functions with sine and cosine. So that's what we're going to do here. To, to start with, I want to use something simpler. The tides actually is slightly harder just because of the period involved. But I happen to go here this summer. Um, I know that this looks very exciting, but it is kind of cool to see. The, um, if you've ever been, I don't know, the Maritimes, the Bay of Fundy, this place right here in between Nova Scotia and New Brunswick, um, this, this has the highest tides in the world just because of the geography here. As the tide's coming in, it kind of rushes in here and into the little inlets and stuff. And there's these huge tides, right? This boat's floating on this dock here, and then all the water's gone. Um, they actually, the tides are so strong there that they even, they even go up the rivers. Now, when I was there, they said, oh, while well, you're here, you have to see the tidal bore. It's, uh, this, the water goes up the river, so it looks like the river's flowing the wrong way. So we sat and waited for this tidal bore. It happens at a certain time as soon as the tide's coming in. I kind of found out why it was called a tidal bore because we're sitting there waiting. And I guess in, in the past, before they had all these bridges and things built on the rivers, it was actually quite impressive. It was like this six-foot wave that rushed up the river, which would be kind of going the wrong way, right? The water's going down, but this big wave comes up this way. But uh, so we're sitting waiting. This lady from Parks Canada is describing it. Oh, it's going to be, it's going to come right at 623 or whatever. And then this wave that was about this tall sort of just gently comes up and that's it. We waited around here for that. Um, anyways, it's an interesting phenomenon, I guess. Uh, but you can, you can model anything that's periodic. It happens like she could tell you pretty much it's going to be, I mean, the, the impressive thing was she knew it's going to happen in the next two minutes, and sure enough, it did, right? Because it's it's based on something that's predictable, right? The tides are predictable, and they and they fluctuate. I would actually prefer to start with not. I put this in this order. I think this one's maybe slightly harder because dealing with the tides and the time issues and stuff, we get mixed up on AM, PM, and all that stuff. So I probably should have put it in the reverse order. We're going to start with a Ferris wheel thing, uh, although I. I think to help uh, you understand this, uh, we're, I actually had this at home and I thought, why not bring this in here? Where could we put it? Right here. My grade eights, I had to hide it from them. They were pretty excited. They wanted to play with it, with this Ferris wheel. Oh, cool. I have that at home. <laughs> Sorry if some of you were thinking that, but um, no, my kids made it at home. Uh, you are trying to write an equation that says... H equals a bunch of stuff, including a T for time. That represents the little Lego man's motion, his height above the ground. I am going to draw my axes like this because I actually don't need, I don't need any negatives on this, right? You don't need any negatives because... Heights and times are positive, right? You, 
Well, I'm just thinking. I don't care if you draw it. If you want to draw it somewhere, you can draw a graph. Uh, later on, you can later on you can go do this question. It's different, but. It's not 10 seconds, you're right. So you need to think about you need to think about which you know what what that has to be, what this has to be, what this has to be, and what that has to be. Okay? Go ahead and start that again. Swipe your finger slower. Draw the beginning point here, then draw the when he's back at the bottom, halfway in between those points has got to be at the top, which is which is 50. Halfway in between these two points, he's got to be halfway, so he's got to be there. And the same goes over here, halfway in between those two, he's halfway. And then just continue the pattern, right? He keeps going around. And then draw the curve from there. It goes up. This is not going to be drawn that well, but it gives you a rough idea of what the graph looks like. That one was pretty bad, and that one was pretty bad. But it gives you a rough idea what the graph looks like. If you want to know then what the, the period is 6, so this has to be 2 pi over 6, if you're using 6 as the period. And the phase shift and whether this is sine or cosine, you got to decide based on this. If if you're starting at the bottom, this, the simplest thing to do is to call it, if you're starting at the very bottom, what's the simplest thing to do? Well, sine starts in the middle on the way up. Negative cosine is the simplest thing to do because that's at the bottom. So you could call it, you could call it negative 20 cos this and then not use any phase shift at all. Or if you decided you wanted to call it positive sine, you could call it 20 sine 2 pi over 6, but you'd have to do a phase shift here. How far has it been shifted right here? What would that be? How long does it take him to get from there to the, the middle going up? I didn't stop him in the right place. I did, actually. What a coincidence. How far did it take him to get from the bottom to here? If it took six seconds to get all the way around, there's four, four phases, right? Yeah, 1.5. There's four phases in this. There's from there to there. There's from there to there. There to there and there to there. Th that corresponds to these four sections, right? That... That, that, and that. There's four, four parts to the cycle before it starts repeating. So if you're calling it a sine curve, this would have to be minus 1.5. But everything else is the same, right? You could write the other two as well. You could write negative sine, negative cos or positive cosine. It doesn't make sense to use negative if you have to do a phase shift as well. It just complicates the thing. This is what you're doing in this section is modeling things. Okay, if you, I, I should have put this in the other order. I want you to do this one first. Uh, it's, you know, it's an example you can work through for yourself. You're given information here about it. You can see from the picture, the high point, the low point and all that. Then go back and try and do the, the tides one. The tides thing is harder because you're, because you have numbers like this. You don't get mixed up on, if you want to know a time of 4.30, if your time is 4.30, what do you use for a T value in an equation that you write? Not 4.3, 4.5, right? So you have, to, you have to think about it you know, in decimal form. And as well, if you want a time of 6.45 p.m., what would you have to use for that? Yeah, you'd have to. Well, it, it would be 0. 0.75, but if it's if it's PM, it's got to be 1875, right? Because it's 12 plus that, right? If it's PM, I'm sure you can solve all those problems. There's there's practice questions in here. There's not tons of them. There's there's looking at it on the calculator. This will take a little while to do, but I think you can uh, you can get it between now and next period. If you don't want to do the filling in the blanks, don't worry about filling in the blanks. You can, uh, we can do that together or something. But there's some practice questions here. You're just modeling anything to do with um, periodic behavior. A spring, simple harmonic motion, the spring going up and down. Um, this, you know, pedal going around here, the height of the pedal above the ground. 
lots of things here. You can do this, okay? Can you get going on that, please?